everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Anabaptist Perspectives. We're here with Joel Yoder again, and we're in New York City um, at the Training Center, where you teach a bunch of different uh, classes on ministry and, and church and being involved in reaching out to people. And the last episode we did, we were discussing what burnout is, what causes it, um, the ways we can help. This time, let's kind of follow up on that conversation. What are ways that we as individuals specifically, people that are in ministry, people involved in church, what are things we can do to avoid burnout to begin with? I wish I had a perfect answer to that. <laughs> and I want to give a couple disclaimers here. One, I don't know that there is a roadmap that works for everyone. There is no perfect, if you follow these steps, you won't avoid burnout. But I, I do think that there are some steps that we can take that will certainly reduce it and hopefully avoid burnout. I have a list of about 15 different things that we can do that are not original with me. They're a result of reading good books on the, the subject and hopefully we can have a, a list of resources that the viewers could follow up on. Mm -hmm. Good books, good articles. So the, the points that I'm going to give are not original with me. The first one I mentioned in our last episode, and I think it's vital, I'm re-saying it because I think it's so important, and that is mm -hmm link your work to serving your Heavenly Father. In other words, the ministry that you're involved in, I'm doing this ministry, or you're doing this ministry because of your love for God, and you're following His call on your life to serve these people. And when that is our number one focus, then even if people don't respond the way that we want, it's disappointing, but we're not failures because ultimately our work is for God. So link your work with serving your Heavenly Father. The second thing, spend lots of time in the Word of God and in prayer. The more time you spend in prayer, I think will have a direct correlation to reduction in burnout. The more you spend in prayer, the more time you spend with our Father, the more direction we get is saying, this is where you're supposed to go. This is when you can say no. This is when you can stop for the night. Or this is a request you should take. Spend lots of time with the Word of God in prayer. Another one that's similar and yet uh, is different is practice stillness. Just mm. spend some time. This is not a Buddhist meditation, <laughs> but just, just practice stillness. Uh -huh. um, Anna Werner says it's a conscious reminder that we can stop and the world won't. Hmm. Unpack that a little more. When you say stillness, are you saying removing yourself from where you're at or just getting away from people? Um, or is it different? Taking, it's a little different. Just taking time to just pause and reflect and rest. Hmm. Getting quiet um, in your head. Just quiet yeah. in your mind. Again, it's uh, usually we think, well, I, I can't just be quiet. I have to be praying or I have to read my Bible or I have mm -hmm. to be doing something. Part of our society has driven us to that. We keep going and going and going. And if we sit down for five minutes or 10 minutes, it's like, oh my goodness, I'm guilt I feel guilty. I should be doing something. I'm yeah. lazy. And sometimes just, just practice sitting down. Just stop. It's a reminder that I can stop and the world won't. Another thing that you can do that I think is really important is develop some margin in your life. We all have the limits of what we can sustain long term. And we're going to have times where we're working above that limit. We know it's not sustainable long term because there's always going to have, we're always going to have crises that are going to come up. We're going to have unexpected events. So if you have margin in your life between your maximum of what you can sustain and where you actually are, that gap is your margin. And if you can develop margin in your life, so then unexpected events come and you're like, yeah, I can do that. You have some cushion, right. basically. You have a cushion there, and a part of the, the problem that I have that led me closer to burnout, as I said in our last episode, was not having margin in my life. Mm. I maxed out my schedule. I was like, well, I can squeeze this in yet. And then I, you kind of get used to that pace of life, and then it's like, well, maybe I could do something else, or unexpected things come. So develop margin in your life. I think that's really, that's really important. One way to do that, and this is another point to avoid how to avoid burnout, is learn how to say no. I don't like saying no. Me neither. I, I, 
<laughs> I'm afraid yeah. people won't like me or the ironic thing is is when you learn to say no then your yes becomes more valuable and stop and think about this for a minute so if you're involved in ministry and people know that they can come and they can dump anything on you and you always say yes you will be taken for granted and if you're not careful you're gonna start you'll say yes but you'll resent the people for asking oh that happens yeah. Yeah. that happens in ministry I've done it mm -hmm. I've said yes but I'm inside I'm like can't you see I'm overworked we need to learn how to say no yeah. and that's one way to to learn how to avoid burnout or how to avoid burnout is by learning how to say no Peter Brain in his book going the distance says pastors burn out because they're lazy and you're like what do you mean mr. P like what do you mean that it's like actually they're too lazy to develop a schedule and articulate their priorities and say this is what I'm going to do and then everyone else's priorities become their priorities so they burn out oh wow Mm -hmm. So articulate your priorities, say this is important, this is what I'm going to do, this is a priority for me, and you schedule those in, and then sometimes you do have to say no to other requests. Another thing that you can do to help avoid burnout is take time to take care of yourself. Intentional self-care is not intended to be self-pampering, it's not a self-indulgence, but rather it's trying to manage the resources that God has given us and our body is one of those resources to be able to sustain ourselves to go the distance. Some of those things uh, could include like have hobbies, something that you do just because you enjoy doing it. We sometimes can feel guilty because we're like, oh, I'm involved in ministry and I know people are supporting me and I am, you know, I'm supposed to be working. Let's well, stop and think for a moment. If you work for a carpenter and you're doing your carpenter job, when you're on the clock, you're working 45 hours a week or however many hours a week, like you want to give everything you can because you're being paid for that. And ministry is no different, but just the fact that people are supporting us in ministry doesn't mean that they expect us to work 90 hours a week. Mm. Like we do need to have time to recharge and do something that we enjoy. So have hobbies and hopefully it was something that you enjoyed before you went overseas or before you got involved in ministry. Something you did before. Maybe it's painting or drawing or reading. Uh, but have hobbies that you can do. Another thing that is really important is get physical exercise. It's different than having hobbies though they can be kind of similar but getting physical exercise, getting out and getting your heart stirring. Not the study done by Oxford University but a separate mm -hmm. study found that if you get physical exercise three to four times a week, that is just as effective for dealing with depression as taking a medium to mild dose of antidepressants. Many studies, almost every book that I have read on burnout or relating to that mm -hmm. subject emphasizes that point that you need to get physical exercise. Another thing that you can do uh, to help avoid burnout is to continue learning. I think I said it in the last episode when ministry we're often giving out and I think it's important that we take in. Get good books mm -hmm. to read. So maybe you could set a goal of I'm going to read one good book like for input, not just for the fun of it. You can read as a hobby, but reading, intentional reading for input, maybe one good book a month or one book a quarter, something like that. Set it a reasonable goal mm -hmm. and that you can take in and continue, uh, continue getting more input. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I think is important in how to avoid burnout is have uh, friendships outside of your team. Mm. Often in ministry, we're living overseas, we're sharing a house, maybe you're sharing a room depending on if you're single like a school teacher or you're working in a, in a setting, you're sharing a room with your, your fellow worker, you're sharing a vehicle, you eat your meals together, you go to the same church, and if you're only friends mm. are in that circle it can start rubbing on you after a while so have mm -hmm. a friend off the team that the only reason you're friends is because you enjoy being together yeah. that's a good thing mm -hmm. to have in in order to avoid mm -hmm. or to help avoid burnout kind of along with that too you could have a mentor I think it's really important every one of us needs a mentor someone that can speak into our life that when we're not sure where to go or what to do with the situation we can say hey I'm not sure. Uh, you've walked a road like this before me. Um, how can I? How can I handle it? That that was the biggest one for me, honestly. 
having good mentors in my life. Another thing you can do is just pay attention to your body. Like if, if you're, this is not so much something to do, but more like a warning sign, something to be alert for if you realize that you're always tired. Like your body's trying to tell you something. Yeah. It's saying slow down. Either you need to get more sleep, you need to spend less time on social media or something. <laughs> but you need yeah. to get more yeah. sleep and, and slow down a bit. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe it's a loss of appetite. Maybe it's a sudden weight gain or weight loss. Like your body's trying to tell you something. So listen to your body if mm -hmm. you see abnormal um, or changes that are no longer normal. Listen to your team members. I talked about that um, earlier that maybe your team members are saying, hey Reagan, you need to slow down a bit. Uh, don't take on so much. Someone just told me that today, actually. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. Don't, don't resent them for it. I, mm -hmm. I did. I, I did. I'm like, why are you telling me? Like, I, that's like, I what I this. enjoy doing. Yeah, yeah. Even if it's something you enjoy doing, you can only do so much. Mm -hmm. So if your team members are saying, hey, you're approaching this limit, you're, you're going to go over the edge, listen to them. I'm not saying you yeah. can't do anything without their permission, but listen to them. They, they do care about you. That's why they are taking the time mm -hmm. to share that with you. And finally, I think I'll just say, pay attention if the things that you used to enjoy have lost their appeal. You no longer mm. enjoy them. And I talked about that in a previous episode. Mm -hmm. uh, when I used to enjoy a particular ministry and I no longer enjoyed it. That was a warning sign and I knew it. At the time, I wasn't quite sure what to do, uh, but I needed to slow down. Mm -hmm. So there's just a few things there that you can pay attention mm -hmm. to, steps you can take, things you can be listening for, being alert to that hopefully can help you avoid burnout. I don't want to see our workers burned out. It takes far more time and far more energy to recover from burnout than it does to avoid it in the first place. And I really want wow. anyone who's involved in ministry to stay back from that edge so they don't have to go through the, the struggle and the time and the pain of trying to rebuild after burning out. Yeah, that's a big one for people to understand. Uh, maybe they don't quite realize how um, detrimental this is to what they're actually trying to do and how um, less effort it would take just to sustain themselves instead of just pushing themselves all the way until something breaks. Yeah, well, we want people to take this seriously, learn from it, and as a result, be so much more effective you know, in what they're trying to do. So thank you for taking the time, doing all the research, um, putting all this together. That's, yeah, that's really good stuff. And maybe um, people will watch this and want to come take some of your classes up here in New York City someday. I'd be glad <laughs> if they would. <laughs> that would be I'd awesome. Be we'll, put, we'll, would, yeah. we'll put a link to it. Okay. Um, maybe we can get some people to come over here. But sure. yeah, I really appreciate your time.